Hi, I'm Candace Postel, the 2020-2022 GFWC Florida Director of Junior Clubs. I can't wait to share with you today the project that I have selected because it's a small, easy way for you and your club to impact a child's life in your local community. I'm sure you can guess that it involves shoes based on the logo. So you may be asking yourself, can shoes really change a child's life? Yes, they can. Think about the last time you wore a pair of shoes that hurt your feet and didn't fit correctly. Maybe you've had this happen at fall board or convention. Your feet are hurting, so you sit in a workshop and all you can think about is that your feet hurt and you want to get your shoes off. But you're going to have to walk again soon to the next workshop and then the next. And then dinner? Ugh, will the day ever end? Will you ever get to take these shoes off? Will your feet ever stop hurting? Oh, did you bring another pair of shoes or do you have to wear these ones again tomorrow? You're not even sure what workshop you are currently sitting in because you can't listen to anything being said. Your mind is racing and your feet are hurting. Now imagine being a child whose parents can't afford to buy you shoes. You get hand-me-downs that have been handed down at least twice already. The soles are coming loose. There's a hole and they aren't even the right size. These shoes cause blisters and your feet get wet when it rains. How could you possibly listen in school with your feet hurting constantly? Kids in this situation don't have the opportunity to do well in school and it has nothing to do with their academic abilities. One in five children in the US live in poverty, which means for a family of four with two adults and two kids, they are living off around $25,000 a year. 18% of children are wearing shoes that are two sizes too small. And 47% of children are wearing shoes that are one size too small. Schools report an increase in attendance when children have new shoes and an increase in physical activity. Why would that be? Maybe because some of these kids have to walk to school, so without comfortable shoes that fit, they'd rather just stay home than be in pain. Maybe it's because when their feet are hurting and miserable, they just wanna stay home. Even if they don't walk to school, their feet hurt once they get there. Another reason it increases kids' attendance is because they are bullied less when they aren't wearing worn out shoes. Think about how new shoes make you feel. For one, they make you confident. If you've ever seen a kid try on shoes, the first thing they want to do is run in them. New shoes make you run faster and jump higher. Just ask any kid. New shoes also raise our self-esteem. They make you stand a little taller. And new shoes make you so excited to show your family and friends. You may be asking yourself, where do we find kids who need shoes? If you aren't sure, I've got some ideas for you. Some of these may be projects you are currently doing or organizations you are currently working with, and you may be able to incorporate a children's shoe donation into it. I'm a member of the GFWC Plant City Junior Women's Club, and we reach out to the guidance counselors at our local elementary schools and have them provide a list of 50 students in need of shoes. We do have a permission slip signed by the parents. We then go to the schools and size the students. We have found that we are often given incorrect sizes if we ask the parents. Once we have the kids sized, we go to the store and purchase the shoes. We return to the school and give the students the new shoes and a new pair of socks. Your club may have an adopted school or you may partner regularly with a local elementary, middle, or high school. If your club doesn't want to go into the school to size the kids, you could see if they have some type of clothing closet and provide a variety of sizes for when a kid shows up with improper shoes on. Your area may also have an organization such as Clothes for Kids that collects clothes and shoes and distributes them to the local schools for kids in need. If you currently do projects for the Boys and Girls Club, I'm sure there are some kids there who could use some new shoes. Children who take part in Big Brothers Big Sisters may also be in need of shoes. 
Recently, I was talking to a GFWC member who participates in this program, and she told me that the little girl, sh girl she mentors through Big Brothers Big Sisters showed up with her brother's worn-out shoes on, and they were two sizes too big and falling apart. Another segment who may need new shoes are foster kids. If your club partners with Guardian Ad Litem, you could provide shoes for them to distribute to kids in foster care. There are many organizations who support foster kids, so if your club has a relationship with one and already does projects for them, reach out and see if they need shoes. I know many of you partner with Habitat for Humanity to provide books for the children moving into the house. These kids very likely need shoes as well, so you could provide a pair of shoes for each child, along with the books you are providing to the families. Your club may adopt a family during the holidays. So just add a pair of shoes to the toys and goodies for the children. These are a handful of ideas. You can distribute shoes to underprivileged kids in your community however you like. Make this project your own. So now let's talk money. How are you going to get money for these shoes? Well, first, you can raise money to purchase shoes. If you want to size the kids and purchase shoes specifically for each child, you'll probably need to do a fundraiser so that you'll have the money to purchase the shoes. Hold a fundraiser and specify that the money will go to purchase shoes for kids. I'm sure there's others in your community who would want to participate. Don't forget about grants. North Pinellas Women's Club recently received a grant to purchase to purchase shoes to donate to Clothes for Kids, which provides clothing and shoes for children in need. A copy of their grant application is on the website, so you can use this as a guide if you have not applied for grants in the past. If you raise funds and go shoe shopping, be sure to check stores and online. Talk to a manager to see if you can get a discount. Our club partnered with Payless each year, and they allowed us to buy gift cards at a discount. Then they would also honor the buy one, get one half off, even if the promotion was not currently going on in the store. This made our money go a lot further. We could normally get 700 pairs of shoes for about $10,000. We also partner with local businesses and churches to provide the new socks that we give out with the shoes. Be sure to check local stores like Walmart and Target. And sometimes their prices are cheaper online, so if you aren't able to secure a discount in person, be sure to check the online prices. There are so many stores that carry kids' shoes. Hibbets, DSW, Shoe Station, Famous Footwear, Kohl's, Marshalls, Ross, Burlington Coat Factory, just to name a few. So be sure to check around and see who has the best deals in your area. You can also hold a shoe drive. You could host a bingo, a bunko, or other social and ask each person to bring a new pair of children's shoes to donate. You could also have businesses help hold shoe drives, especially around back to school time or the holidays. A short story from Diana McDowell of the Plant City Juniors and her recent experience. It was my first time helping with the shoe project and I had Lincoln Magnet School. I heard juniors at our meetings talk about how excited the students are to get new shoes, but I was finally able to experience their reaction firsthand. I wish I could have videoed it to share, but I will never forget. All the students were excited, but one really stood out. He was about eight years old, and he came in with shoes that were way too small and no socks on. He was very quiet and shy, but had a big smile on his face. He said hi to me, and he told me his name. I told him to have a seat, and I got his new shoes and socks. I said, here you go, young man. The other kids told him to put them on, so he nervously took off his old shoes, and as he put on his new socks, he said he doesn't wear socks because his shoes are too little, so socks make his, make his shoes even tighter. He got his shoes on and took a few steps in them. I told him we could put his old shoes in the box, and he could keep his new shoes on. He excitedly said, I got new shoes and I get to take them home? I said, of course. And then he replied, wow, I can't believe I get to wear these again tomorrow. Remember, to a kid, new shoes are life-changing. For these kids to get a new pair of shoes, they will not forget this. I remember one of our junior members talking about growing up with a single mom and several brothers and sisters. 
Her mom could not afford new shoes, and she remembers receiving new shoes from the Plant City Juniors. 30 years later, she still remembers this. Please look around your communities for those kids who are in need of shoes. You and your club can make a difference.